How's it going Scrub Gamers? Welcome back to another video here at Scrub Games and today we have another of our Understanding How to Build series where I help you understand how to build any given leader, any given set to suit you and your playstyle because people have different ways to play the game, different ways to like play decks so helping you understand how to build any given leader to help that. Now for this series we have gone over all the blue leads, now we're going over the majority of the green ones and now one of the last of the green ones being Hunter himself. So if you're interested in the Bad Batch and want to build like a theme deck of it or just want to try out the leader because we really like it, then feel free to keep watching. And before we get into the video, feel free to like, comment and subscribe because it keeps you updated with my videos when as when they drop. And by clicking the notification bell, you can get alerts to when videos do drop so you can watch them there and then or a later time that suits you best. Now do remember as well, we do not offer leaders or lists in this um in this series. We don't uh, offer lists because we're instead offering you helpful advice to help you understand how to build it to suit you and your playstyle. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and help you understand how to build Hunter in this video. So like we always do, before we get into kind of like what, the, what aspects offer, kind of what, how you want to, how the best ways to build it, some advice and stuff, we want to first look at the leader. Because while some leaders are like can be, maybe are quite generic, some leaders are not so generic and more themed or I want to do a certain kind of thing. So before we get into offering any advice to see what they offer, we need to look at the leader first to help see what he kind of wants to do. And for Hunter here, the Outcast Sergeant, he is a little bit more of a themed focus one. Like he's got a certain kind of goal to use. And not only that, but he offers you the traits Fringe and Clone, which Fringe currently there's nothing to support fringe, but clone, there is a little bit of support, like a little bit in this one, and with the third set being like based on like the prequel series my prequel series of films, like being like the Clone Wars and stuff, we could get a lot more clone clone stuff to maybe get some more clone support. But for now, he offers you those traits, which are not the best traits to get support, but he also does offer you the aspects of command, which is green, and heroic, which is white. Now these are relevant because along with this, uh, with your leader and your base, you get a, min a maximum of three aspects, and those aspects help when it comes to playing cards. Because in this game, you can play whatever you want. You can put any anything you want in your deck, whatever you want, no matter the aspect, and play out cards as well, no matter the aspect. But if you do try to play a card where the aspects don't match from the card what's on your leader or base, you have to pay an aspect penalty. And what that basically means is for each one that doesn't match on the card towards, uh, well, anyone that on the card doesn't match what's on your leader or base, you have to pay an extra 2 4. So if you were to play uh, a blue base with Hunter, you'd have access to green, white, and Vigilance, which is blue. Now, if you wanted to play a, a card that's solely green, white, or blue, or a combination of blue, white, and green, white, then that'd be fine because those aspects match up on your leader or base. So you have to pay it for just what the cost of the card is. Now, if you want to play cards that don't have aspects that match, if you want to play a yellow card, now that doesn't match what's on your leader or base, so you have to pay an extra two. So if the card costs three, yeah, that costs five in total because it's cost of three plus the two for the aspect not matching. Now, if you want to play a card that is both uh, yellow and black, neither of those aspects match, so you have to pay two per the aspects that don't match. So if it was a three cost once again, you have to pay an extra two for the yellow aspect that doesn't match. Two for the black aspect that doesn't match. So it's a seven cost for a card that would normally cost three, which doesn't sound great. And even then with double aspects, once again, if you had Hunter with a blue base, if you want to play a card that's double green, you'd have to pay an extra two because while you do have green on your Hunter, you only have one aspect on Hunter that's green. So while you don't have the second green aspect among your base, then you'd have to pay an extra two on top of that card. And that's why sometimes you do you can play a... Uh, green base with a green leader to have double double aspects but that loses you. We'll get into that and what the benefits on that is later in the video. But that's what it comes to the aspect penalty. So Hunter will offer you green and white and then depending on your base, offer a third one to help with um, making so you don't have to pay the aspect penalty. Because while sometimes the aspect penalty is worth playing because the card is like good, you just have to work out what the card is and how it benefits you um, the best. Now with Hunter as well, he does deploy like all leaders, but he does deploy quite late. He deploys as late as Vader, being at seven resources, but luckily where he's in the green aspect, he has access to ramp without needing the base that's green. So you can have that to try and get Hunter out a little bit earlier. And there are some good cards in his kind of theme of the Bad Batch that kind of offer you uh, some ramp as well. So when you get to seven more resources, which is early as turn six if you don't ramp, then you get to deploy him. He comes down with a solid stats at 5'8", just like Vader. So very good attack and very good health as well. He does also come with the overwhelm skill, which means when he defeats a unit, um, well, when, yeah, when he defeats a unit, any excess damage you've put on the unit that exceeds the health of the 
uh, unit you've taken out. Um, go onto your opponent's base and say you attack. Uh, if you have a attack a card that's got free health and you'll five damage to it, that's free damage towards the card that defeat it, and the extra two damage goes to your opponent's base thanks to overwhelm. So it's like piercing in a sense. And Thor's effect is all about um, dealing with unique units because where part of the bad batch, they're all quite unique, even though they're clones, they're a unique batch of clones, batch 99. And um, he's all about doing something with unique units. So when he's in the leader area, his effect is by paying one and tapping himself. You reveal a resource you control, so one of your cards, you one of your resources, you reveal it. And if it shares a name with a friendly unique unit you control, then you return the resource to its owner's hand and put the top card of your deck into play as a resource. You're kind of gaining cards back, but it's all focused on unique units. So you can't just show like resupply, get it back or anything like that. But you can if I say you've got echo on the board, but you've got an echo resource, you can go right, I've got an echo in my resources, I control an echo, get echo back. Put the top card of your deck in a resource, you kind of get cards back, get some value, some options. So that means like so it means any unique um any unique unit that you uh control can well any unique card to do resource, you kind of get them back, which is nice. And he does the same thing when he's deployed as well, but now it's on attack rather than action. So it's now on attack, you reveal a resource you control. If it shares the same name with a friendly unique resource, you uh unique resource, then you well, unique unit, then you return the resource back to his owner's hand and put the top card of your deck in the player's resource. And now where it doesn't say how the resource comes in, it has to come in in rested. Like unless the resource, unless the card says that resource is inactive, it always comes in rested. Or exhausted, like the uh, term is for Star Wars. So that's Hunter, he's a bit focused on unique units, so we're going to go over and kind of see what benefits he has. But also he does have a showcase of all leaders, and the showcase I reckon looks really nice. Like the background isn't appealing to me, but the actual like look of Hunter as well, like it's really cool, it's like very comic-y, which I really like. Him with his little blaster and his knife, his little combo there. But then the background is just very loud, it's like compared to like things like Hondo and stuff where you've got a pretty cool background to go with like the cool like look of the characters. It just had a better background than just a light shining behind him. Then uh, I reckon it'd be cool. But then once again, art is subjective. If you like it, it's fair enough. If you don't like it, it's fair enough as well. It depends on your taste, not everybody else's. But it's a pretty nice one. Uh, I just, yeah, wish the background was a little better. And then also we've got the Bad Batch. So if you do want to play a themed, this is the Bad Batch. If you haven't watched it, then you probably should go and watch it. It's a pretty nice series. Like I mean, I watched it to kind of like uh, understand a bit more about the Star Wars universe because I haven't watched all of it. So I started trying to watch it. And I luckily watched the Bad Batch up until it, the, I, I got to the last episode just as it released. So I kind of timed that perfectly and not realized it was, wasn't already out or well. But yeah, like the part that the bad match are uh, Hunter himself as the leader. And then you've got Omega, Tech, Echo, Crosshair, Wrecker, and Roller. Now, if you're wondering why they're all heroic, uh, heroic units apart from Crosshair, and why they're on like different aspects and stuff like that, then it's best that you watch the series to kind of understand why, because it explains it properly in there. Because you've got the they got all the crew there, the crew units, and you've got their um their spaceship that they basically go around on being the marauder and also remember these are all unique units so a very good benefit of hunter like this why is all about unique units because they're all quite unique uh in basically just how they are and uh the units themselves so do get out and text really nice when they go with hunter to make sure all your units have smuggle or all your resources have smuggle so you can like play them out as well from there so now we got that over, let's um, check out what the aspect combinations are. So, depending on what base you add, you can get uh, four different aspect combinations. Now, if you give yourself a blue, a vigilance base, which is blue, you get access to white, green, blue. Because remember, Hunter as gives you the command and heroic uh, aspects. You always have those, and then the B base gets the other one. Now, if you have a never command, you have a command base, and you have access to uh, white and double green. If you have a aggressive base which is red, you have access to white, blue, uh, white, green, red. And if you have access to a cunning base which is yellow, you have access to white, green, and yellow. Now these all offer different ways to play because the best way to explain that is based on the what the um what each of the aspects want to do. So normally I explain this, uh, well I didn't explain this for the previous ones as when it comes to each of the aspects, but it's best to answer now. So if you're looking to play um for Vigilance at the blue base, then what Vigilance wants to do is Vigilance plays very defensively with the ability to either, well, to either heal damage from your base or units, remove threats from, uh, from dangerous units from play using like events, and also protect your base from any attacks with things like Sentinel. 
Now this aspect is perfect for anybody who wants to play patient, or like patient playstyle and grind out and even just like endure aggro while healing and then grind out by um at like pure advantage. So if you want to play um Visions, that's a good one to go for. And then you've got command, and remember command is when you also have on your leader as well, so you can go double command. And command wants you to accelerate your resources and basically bring out loads of units or strength of units with uh, that you already have in play, or like bring out some really big, big like units so you can either go wide or go tall. Uh, wide is in like lots of units out, tall is in very big units, like I have very big stats. And then this is a good great aspect if the choice if um if your choice of play style is to overwhelm your opponents with a massive board presence, then this is the one for you. And by going double green you do lose access to um uh a, like a larger card pool, but you do have access to some really powerful double green cards. And there are more than that now since we've got a second set, can you double the uh double the amount of cards for each kind of aspect and combination. Now for red, which is aggression. Now for this aspect, you want it, it uh, wants you to attack with a maximum efficiency, deal out like loads of damage, either on units or your base. And then this aspect is a great fit if you are someone who prefers a fast place, fiery play style that wants to break through defenses and just hurl damage at and just basically achieve victories quickly and as uh, aggressively as possible. So if you want to play a very aggressive deck and just be able to just like throw out damage or things to take things out before it even get going, aggression is a good choice. And then we've last one we've got is cunning. So cunning is one of those really nice ones where it wants to adapt to any situation or on the fly with either power of minimal effects or lots of tools for disrupting your opponent's game plan. Now this is an aspect that is perfect fit for if anybody wants to like just respond quickly to threats or have an answer to anything your opponent might throw you at you. And it's a great one to have like a, almost an answer for everything, which is pretty nice. So this is different aspect combinations and kind of what each aspect kind of wants to do. But before we get into actually the benefits of each of these combinations, we are going to check out and explain about the ratios. Because with the ratios, you can play up to three copies of any given card in your deck. So you can play either three, two, or one copies of a card. And they have benefits for the how many you want of each one. So for three copies of a card, are normally cards that you want to see as quickly as possible and as many as possible quickly. So things like a Mega is very good because it's a good turn one play. You can play as early as turn one. And also, what you, like, you do have the, the aspects to play it out because you have to do a go command with it to do it. But it's a very good uh, turn one play because not only that, it, like with, if you want to go themed with um, Hunter as well for the Bad Batch, it gives you a great effect where you ignore the aspect penalty on the first clone unit you play, and all the all the um, all of the Bad Batch are clones. So it means you can ignore the um, the villainy uh, aspect on Crosshair, like you see here. You can ignore the aggression on uh, aspect on Wrecker, or even. Uh, on like Wolf as well, like he's not part of the bad match but clone, you can ignore the red one, uh, red aspect on him if you're playing not no red. And not only that, it also allows you, it gives you one played where you switch the top five cards of your deck for a clone, really enjoy it, so it's going to be even better for the next set when we get more clones, and even this way to find your uh, find your bad match. So this is one you might want to find as early as possible, make sure you try and find it for your opening hand to play turn one, and then allow you to play your ever bat, like your ever clones out with ignoring the aspect on you. And then for two copies of card, these are cards that you might not either not want to see too many early, but see them later in the game, or be like the late game threats. So like, for example, Crosshair, this is one that no matter what combination you go for, is going to incur an aspect penalty because it has the villainy trace. He's going to cost at least six unless you've got Omega out. Now, if you don't see Omega or don't play Omega, the player out, but want to still play it, then you have to wait for playing it in the late game when you've got six resources. Now, where you can ramp in green, if you see multiple of these, if you played three, you see multiple of these early, you're not going to play them, you have to resource them or keep them in hand. If you're resourcing them, you don't have an access to them, unless you can give it smuggle. And if you keep them in hand, it means you have less of an hand, less options, because you're keeping this card to play later. Now, if you go for two copies of the card, you're not, hopefully not going to see any early or many early, and then hopefully see them later again when you can play them and make use of them. And then we've got the uh, one copies of the card. It's normally like tech choices. Cards you put in for if a like a very specific situation comes up, you've got an answer to it. Like it may not like, be a very niche one that basically nine times out of ten won't occur, but the one time it does happen, you want to be prepared. But then you don't want to have it clog up and basically just ru like uh, ruin your consistency in your deck. So you might just want to play one copy of. So if, if you see it, it's great. If you don't see it, it's not. It, you don't care. And then if even in that situation you don't need it, if you do don't need it and you don't see it, you don't care. If you do don't do see it and you don't need it, you resource it. But if you don't see it and you do need it, like it's just tough on that farm. But for things like 
Endless Legion here, which is a very late game card. 40 measles, so you've got to ramp a lot just to get to it, if you want to get to it quickly as possible. But it's very powerful, and you reveal any number of resources you control, and play each reveal unit uh, that way for free. So a very powerful effect, but very, very late. And it's one you might want to play one of, because it just gets in the situation where it comes up, a gimmick, or it comes in the, like against control decks. Then you want to have that option. Then you can protect it once that way. It's not clogging your hand with too many copies, and hopefully you see it when you need it. So hopefully that has explained the ratios and helped you out there. Now, without the way, let's go and check out what aspect uh, combinations there are and what the benefits of them are. So starting off with the double aspect, because it's the one where in set one it was very, very limited, where like only one leader in each aspect uh, could really benefit properly from the double aspect. So you didn't see much of it. But now with a second set, we've got double the amount of double green cards, double amount of green cards, and double amount of everything. So you're not as limited in your um, card pool. And like with each aspect combination, you've got an ac access to either one rare base because we didn't get a second one, or any we had a second one for each aspect in set two. And you got the basically many many different locations that ha are the uh, thirty health base. So you got the option of a uh, thirty health base that has no effect, so you just got maximum health but no effect. Or you have the rare base which has less health at twenty five instead of thirty, but at the sacrifice of that five health, you have access to an epic action, which is an action just like deploy. You can use once a game. And then once it's used, it's done, that's it, you can't use it for the rest of the game, but they're normally pretty good. And the epic action on an e, um, energy conversion lamp, or short under the ECL, is one of the best in the game and one of the most used base in the game. Because its epic action allows you to play a unit, it costs 6 or less. Still paying its cost though, you're not paying it for free paying its cost, and you give it ambush. So you're basically using this card to play out a unit at 6 or less, still paying the cost, and giving it ambush. And ambush is a fantastic skill. Because Ambush allows you to, when you play a unit out, if it's got Ambush, you can ready it and then attack an enemy unit, not base, a unit, the same turn it's played. When normally, if you play that card out, it comes out unrested, unless that was stated. So Ambush lets you attack things straight away the same turn by taking out some of your opponent's units so they can kind of uh, get like make use of it before, um, instead of having to wait a turn. Now, one thing you do have to think about when it comes to base, you want to go for 30 health base to give you maximum health, but lose the epic action. Or is the epic action on a rare base worth the loss of 5 health? Now that's what you got to think about. If it's worth it, it maybe interesting to test and try out. But with e well, with the entry version lab, it's one of the most popular ones because ambush is such a great skill. Now with the double green, like once it's, like, like I said, you if you went with double green, you lose ac access to a whole different aspects. So normally, if you went with like green and blue, you have access to all the green cards and all the blue cards. But with double aspect, you lose access to a whole other aspect, so limiting your card pool. But you gain access to some very powerful double green cards. And now one set one you only had three, so it wasn't as worth it. In set two, you've got double the amount of green, just just normal green cards and green, uh, like green white cards you had before. But now you've got double the access to that, and also double the access to uh your double green cards being six now instead of five, uh, so it's three. Now one set one they weren't the best because your general crowd, which wasn't that great, it was a pretty nice cost uh standard unit with a pretty cool effect, meaning that any ever friendly unit you control gains one defeated draw card, which is pretty nice, but if they take him out before taking anything out, you don't really get any benefit of this. So you've got to like heavily protect him, which isn't easy. Especially if you go in double green with a limited card pool. You had attack part and delta, which allowed you to uh, for free cost, allowed you to boost up three units. First one by three, three, second one by two, two, and last one by one one. But this required you to have a uh, like actually three units on the board, because you can't give it to all to one unit, you have to give it to three individual units. So each one. And that was pretty difficult with the limit card pool of double green in set one. And you had command, which is probably the only reason to play in set one double green because it's one of the free ramp options you had. So if you want to play double green, you have access to the maximum of when it comes to ramp. And like every aspect, it's a card they have, which is a four cost event named after what the name of it being the name of the aspect. And it gave you four options. You could use any two and resolve them in any order. And for command, it was either give two experience units to a token, so buff cycle by two, two. Uh, allow a friendly unit to deal um, its power e uh, power as damage to a non leader a uh, non unique enemy unit. So non like non unique is kind of the bad thing about that being like you can't hit like leaders or some of the more powerful un unique cards. Or you can put this card into play as a resource of so ramping, or return a unit from your discard pile to your hand. So all very good options. Mainly the ramping and either experience or gathering stuff back from the discard back to your hands. You can get and reuse some units you've lost. And very good one, and was kind of the only like main reason to play double green because the other two weren't great. Never really saw play, but command was the good reason to play it because of that maximum amount of ramp. 
Now at set two, you have some more. You have Enterprise and Lackeys, but in a very good unit at four, a four cost five five. And when defeated, you can basically defeat a friend, defeat a friendly resource and put him into play as a resource. So you can ramp him because he has Smuggle, which is for six instead of four. Uh, so you can always make sure you've got a unit to play. It's pretty decent, pretty good one. Uh, especially if, even if you're hard casting, a four cost five five is very good for its stats. You also then have Enforced Loyalty. Which is a two cost event allows you to defeat a friendly unit, which could be benefit if this uh, if a unit ha you have has a, a win defeat effect. And if you do, you draw two cards, so a nice bit of draw, and allow you to trigger some win defeat effects. And then we've got endless legion that we saw when it comes to the ratio uh, section, and this is a fourteen cost event that allows you to so very the most expensive card in the game at the moment, but it's very powerful because you fill any number of resources you control and play each of the real units for free. And this is one. This is a card where there will be people playing it as like a gimmick with the focus, being trying to ramp up as quickly as possible, putting loads of good units, that even if they can't play normally, into the resources. So you can get this point, play them out, and just like spam a board, and you can get some. Like we've worked out, you can get some amazing boards where like you can, like t like take out your opponent's entire board, um, and take out from their hand some threats they might use to be able to take them out and make it like a bring up some units that have like. Um, conditions to kind of make it harder for your opponent to kind of deal with stuff, will then guarantee you have a win next turn with how much you've pulled out. So this is a could be another reason to actually play double green and a very good one. And basically with command as well, you're giving yourself the maximum amount of ramp really to try and out. So if you want to go for double green and kind of have access to some really good cards, mainly command and edge legions, that I recommend giving it a try. But then now we're going to the other aspects. I'm now going to blue. So blue has the same thing with bases, but it's rare base. The epic action on it is give a shield to a non-leader unit. Now you'll notice as well there's a theme with the rare bases where they don't really affect the leader, but they do have some pretty nice skills. And a security complex giving a shield to a non-leader unit is very good. And what a shield basically does is the next time you take damage uh, on that unit, you lose a shield instead. So if you had a two shields on, if you had one shield on a unit and it took damage, you'd use a shield. So even if it's one damage or like five damage, it would still use the shield. And it's, you know, it's not op it's not optional. You have to lose the shield instead. And if you had a unit that had two shields on and you took one like uh, some damage in like one instance, it would only lose one shield, not all of them. So you want a benefit like that. And now in blue, you have some pretty nice units in the light side. Like you got better ones now with a second set. Like you have like the non, uh, you have some that's like non unique. Like there's pretty nice ones like Restored Arc, which is a very good turn one unit, gives you Restore. Like blue gives you quite a bit of healing as well. And you have some pretty good, like uh, unique ones as well. Like you got Rose Tico, which is a very good stat, uh, stat card. A four cost two six, come in shield as a shield, and a nice way to use a shield by on attack. Defeating a shield token on a friendly unit or self for another one, and giving two experience tokens to that unit. So if you come down and lo don't lose a shield and can attack with it, you can swing, lose that shield again, give her two experience, so she then becomes a four eight for four cost, which is very good. You got Ray as well being a very good unit, at five costs with four seven stats, the same stats and like the like time she can be played as Boba in, in set one, which we know is amazing. A force unit as well, and uh, she's got a nice on attack where you can heal two damage from a unit, and if it's not, so like give a bit of healing to your units. And if it's not a like a heroic one and just like a green one or a different one, you can give a shield token to it, so it kind of protect it, which is pretty cool. Then you got some very strong late game ones like Luke Skywalker and Chewbacca, being very high cost one with very good stats. Like Luke is a seven cost six seven, Chewie is a four uh, eight cost four ten. But they got very good ones like Chewbacca has grit, so with that bulk of health, ten health, the more damage he takes, the stronger he gets. And Luke has restore three, so when he attacks, he heals three damage for your base. And Luke also has a nice effect at one play. You can give an enemy unit free, minus three free for the stats, which anything that's under zero kills it. But if a friendly unit is defeated the same phase, you can give an enemy unit minus six six instead. So if you've lost a unit the same turn you play them, you can get even bigger minus to kind of take out bigger things or reduce something that's huge down to very little, so you can take it out a little bit easier. And then Chewbacca has got a very nice when played effect, allowing you to deal uh, defeat a unit with five or less remaining HP when he's played. So you can kind of get removal as well as being a Chewbacca. Very nice card. Plus Chewbacca, even if you don't go for blue and go for red, you can then still play Chewbacca because you've got a smuggle cost of 9 for um, uh, aggression being red and heroic as your smuggle cost. So remember, you can play Chewbacca if you're playing red instead of blue and smuggle out. So that is the light side of blue. And then the normal side of blue, you've got some pretty good thing effects. And like I said with blue, it has a, like some events that just instantly remove cards. So you've got things like here, like these events, Fell the Dragon, being allowed for four resources. And defeat a non-leader unit has five or more power, so like kill something big that's not a leader unit. Very nice, very cheap. 
And in Rivals 4, which is the which is an event of six, which is very expensive, but allows you to defeat any unit in the game, being leaders or any unit your front plays. So this is a nice way to kind of get like take out leaders instantly, which is very good. Then you've got some very good units, like you've got some good unique ones like Embo as well, being a very good unit for its cost, free cost, free four. And when he completes an attack, if the defender uh defender was defeated, he heals up the two damage from a unit, could be himself or something else, a bit healing there. And you've got Fen Rao as well, which is a six cost, five, six, not too bad. But when he's played, you can play an upgrade from your hand and it costs two less. So you can play uh upgrade for cheap, like cheaper from your hand. And if you do upgrade, if you play any upgrade on Fen Rao, then you give an, an enemy unit minus two two for its phase. So the more upgrades you put on him, the more you can minus up down. And you can even use it to kind of um play out Fen so you can kind of uh like like reduce the like reduce his power and health uh, power and attack what well, power and health yeah on a unit so you can make it easier to take out and you've got converged strength being a very nice event being a one cost event allows you to heal two damage from a unit and give experience up to it so you're technically increasing it by free health by giving like healing two damage and put experience which gives you one health and not only that but you can smuggle this in for free uh free resources instead of just play it if you don't want to smuggle it so you can either pay one to for its um to play it normally from your hand, or you can pay free to smuggle it from your resources. So that is blue. So if you want, remember, if you want the ability to like uh, like heal and uh, instantly remove things and kind of like um protect your leader and base and stuff, then blue is a very good way to play it because like you've got the shields and sentinels and things like that. Very nice combination. Then you've got aggression. So if you want to be more aggressive for damage and just be like play that kind of aggro strat, you've got aggression. And its rare base is Tarkin Town, which effect allows you to deal free damage to a damage non leader unit. So you can't just throw out uh, free damage for nothing. That would be too great. But if you do try to take something out and not quite, don't quite finish off in one, in an attack or just or like a little bit of a damage short, then Tarkin Town is there to help you finish it off, which is very very nice. And not only that, you have some really nice units. Like you don't have like you do have some good unique ones. Like you have some very good cheap ones. Like you got some space. You got Green Watch and A Wing and Red Free being very cheap space units that are. When they're attacked, they don't hit hard, but when they are attacking themselves, they hit hard because they've got raid, meaning when they attack, they gain power equal to the, the raid number. So for Queen's Wide A-Wing, it's raid 2, so it gains 2 power when attacking, and red 3 gains 1 power when attacking because raid 1. But red 3 also gives all your ever heroic units raid 1, so that all your ever units swing for, um if they're her uh, heroic, gain raid 1, which is very nice. And you've got some very good unique units as well for the ground. You've got K2SO being a very good unit. 4 cost 4-4 four, four with Overwhelm, just like Wrecker here being a 6 cost 7-6 seven, with Overwhelm. Very good stats for their cost. And K2SO's got a nice wind defeat effect, where for each opponent, you can make him either deal 3 damage to that player's base, or make them discard a card from hand. So either deal 3 more damage to base, kind of continue the aggression, or get a bit of hand control by discarding. And Wrecker allows you to sacrifice some energy for damage as well by when played. You can defeat a friendly resource, and if you do, deal 5 damage to a ground unit. And 5 damage is pretty relevant. And then you've got things like Heroic Resolve, which is here, which is a nice little upgrade. If it's a 1 cost upgrade, it's a 1 1 skill, 1 uh, 1 to the stats. But then it's got an action you can use later on, which is an action belief, by where you pay 2 and defeat a Heroic Resolve on this unit, either itself or another same copy of the upgrade on the unit. And then it allows you to attack with a unit, give it 4 plus attack power, and gain Overwhelm, which you know when it defeats a unit, it can give um, any excess damage you do that exceeds the health, goes to your opponent's base instead. So just using this as like a little boost for the beginning, and then later giving out to give like a tackle of a unit, and give it an even bigger power, like even put on Wrecker. He's now a uh, what's it, eight seven with overwhelm, and if you use this later on in the game, you can make then Wrecker swing for eleven, which could be it'd be a way to like finish off the game for a big chunk of damage. So think about it, that's one third of a health of the base, which is amazing. And not only that, you have not only heroic, you have the normal side of um, red as well. So you have some pretty nice ones here. Like you don't have always uh, unique units to benefit from here, um, from Hunter's Effect, but you do have some cards that are not unique, but have very good skills. So you got Wolf here as a unique one, and then there are Clone as well, this is for Omega. Very good stats, but two cost free two, and also has Saboteur, so it can ignore Sentinel and get straight to your opponent's base if you've know, got Sentinel on board. Because Sentinel is a like a kind of like a blocker kind of thing where what's out, your opponent can attack other units in that same phase or a base until the Sentinel's gone. But Wolf can ignore that because it's Saboteur. And even then, he's got an effect that's when played on attack, makes it so the bases can't be healed. So if you're being aggressive as possible and you don't want your opponent to heal up, Wolf is there to help stop that. You also have Clan Challengers being a very good unit at uh, 5 cost, 3, 6. But when he attacks, he's got Raid 3, so he swings and gains 3 power when he attacks. So he swings for 6, but only deals 3 damage when he's attacked. 
And if you upgrade him, he gains Overwhelm as well, which is very good for your unity units, pierce that damage and take out units. You also got IG-11, which is a very good unique unit, a 5 cost, 5, 6, uh, so 6, 5, which is very good stats for its cost. And if your opponent will try to capture him, then he can't be captured. So if you would, uh, if your opponent will try to capture him, instead you defeat him and deal three damage to each ground and en uh, enemy unit in the ground arena. So not doesn't do anything to you. It's just all enemy ground units. They take three damage if they try to capture him. And on attack, he allows you to deal three damage to a damaged ground unit, which is pretty cool. And you got Crate Dragon, probably one of the most expensive cards from set two, and a very strong one, like a very hefty cost at nine. But you're in a ramp color, so you can kind of get there earlier. 10 10 stats with overwhelm and also he's got a very nice effect where if you're when an opponent would play a card you may deal damage equal to that card's cost so the cost up here in like little um is it i can't remember what the shape's called but like where the cost is there you can deal that much to their base or ground unit so if opponent pays a 10 cost boom that's 10 damage to either that unit if it's in the ground arena or to the base it's a very good card and very hard to deal with as well because even if you use an, an event or place it to try and get rid of it you're going to be taking damage. And not only that, we've also got um, Infiltrator's Skill. So this is an upgrade that gives one winter stance, kind of like the same as Heroic Resolve, which like is a very cheap upgrade, it gives one winter stance, but also gives the attached unit Saboteur, which, remember, Saboteur allows you to ignore Sentinel, Sentinel, and even if you're attacking something shielded, defeat the unit's shields that you're attacking into. So a very good upgrade you put on to kind of make sure that if you're attacking into a unit with Overwhelm, you want to kind of, because with Overwhelm you need to defeat the unit to kind of trigger Overwhelm. This is a great way to make sure that if they've got any shields, they're not going to help it survive. They're going to take it out and plus you get increased the stats or even just skip the Sentinel and go to a base, which is very cool. So that's for red. If you want to be very aggressive, kind of go for that. Gives you some really good options. And then lastly, we got is uh, Cunning. So Cunning, its rare base is the one that's probably the least used one I've actually never really seen used by anybody uh, since probably the beginning when people were trying it out. It is uh, Jetta City with the epic action being given non-leader unit, minus four power for that phase. You can make something kind of a little bit easier to take out, but it takes less retaliation damage. Or make something a weaker so it can't do as much damage to you or your units. It's like it's not amazing, but... If you feel like it might be useful, it could be a bit more use in future, but currently it's not the greatest. And in the light side of the yep, cutting, you've got some very good unique units and very good cards. So you've got a Mega once again, very good searcher for your clones and stuff. Uh, and also it helps you play a more theme-focused Bad Match deck by making the aspect up on your first clone you play. Not really, not really matter. So if you want to play Wrecker, uh, if you're playing Yellow and you want to play Wrecker still and Crosshair and stuff, you can play them out with them thanks to Omega without worrying about any aspect penalties that they would share also your beta leader base. You got Kira being a very nice one as well, four cost three fives, so pretty decent stats for its cost. And a very annoying effect as well, because when played, you get look at your opponent's hand, gather a little bit of hand knowledge, see what the options they've got. And then you can name any card, it doesn't have to be in their hand, just any card. And when this while she's in play, each card with the shape with the name costs three more for your opponent to play. So if you want if you saw your opponent hand like so you can handle, they can play that turn or you don't and you don't want to play it, you can just name that card now it costs three more, so they can't play it unless they put the resources for it. So it means you could turn a five cost that they normally play on turn uh turn four into an eight cost, which means they've got to wait a little bit longer. You've also got hand solo, which is a very nice one, because it comes down with pretty good stats at seven cost six six with ambush, and also a very nice skill where while attacking, this unit deals combat damage for a defender. So it attacks a unit that's also got six power six health to its six power. You deal your damage first, and if it's defeated, it won't do any damage back because it's defeated. So a very nice card, especially when you need with Hunter to kind of get it back from your resources. And then you've got some very good events as well. You've got a Spark of Rebellion, made a very good hand control one. You can play it at turn one. Whereas a two cost, allowing you to look at your opponent's hand and discard a card from it. Now if you look at your opponent's hand, they've only got one turn one play. You can run that straight out and they've got nothing to do and they just pass the next turn. Or you can rip out something from your opponent's hand that could be you, like a... Annoying for you and you don't want to see. Like you can either use this very early to make use of it to kind of disrupt some turn progression, or you can use it later game to kind of rip out some late game stuff that you don't want your opponent to drop. And then the next last one uh, event we've got here is Let the Wookiee Win. Now, it's a very nice one. It's a two cost event, but it gives your opponent two difficult choices because the choices are your opponent either lets you ready re six resources, so you can pay two to get back six resources, so you're getting a plus six, four on your resources from this. So paying a lot of resources and using this to get six back means you can play more things or do more things, especially when you've got things like smuggle to make use of if you ain't got much in hand. Getting stuff like smuggling stuff out from your resources could be really good. 
and basically just playing more things or having more options is very, very nice. Or your opponent allows you to ready a friendly unit, and if that unit is a Wookiee unit, you attack with it and he gets plus two power for the attack. So it's mainly his minimum going to be either untap six resources for two or ready ready any friendly unit for two, which is already a unit that does that in, um, there's already like cards that do that in red, but they're very specific. Either like something's got to happen to cheapen the cost or it's got to be a certain kind of power, but it's just you ready any friendly unit. So your opponent either lets you ready six resources to do more things or have more resources to do, like smuggle things and to play more things that do more stuff. Or let your friendly unit, which could potentially be a unit they can attack with to finish you off. Or just get a never attacking or never swinging to like, control your board as well. So it's too difficult for your opponent to play, but a very good card and worthy of a rare as well. So these are all rares as well, which I just realized. And then on the non-heroic side of Cunning, you have some access to these. And you notice I also have Shot, shot DL44 Blaster. Because while it's a red upgrade, and I didn't put in the red one because it's best used in if you're playing yellow than red. Because as an upgrade to play normally, it's just a one cost upgrade that you attach to any non leader non vehicle unit and gives a plus two power but no health. But if you play it in cunning, you can play it uh, better in cunning because it's smuggle cost is a different aspect in normal. Like smuggle costs can either be the same aspects or different aspects. And for its smuggle cost, it's free free for its smuggle cost. So free resources. And the aspect you need on it is cunning. So you can have this as you can just, if you're playing yellow, you can always have this in your deck because so you can resource it and use it later. Because when it's played using smuggle, it allows you to attach, attack with the attached unit. Meaning if you were just playing it in red and you pay it for one and get two power, but you have to wait your turn to be able to attack with that card. But if you're playing it in um, cunning, you can resource it and later on smuggle it out to put on a unit where you've smuggled it out. You can attack straight with that unit to kind of maybe finish the game and win. So it's a very good way to use it, and that's why I've got it here, because it's better as in with the cunning options than it is in the red options. And then the other units you got is like Breeder, which is also a unique one, and it's a one cost free one that basically allows you to put some damage for cheap, and when it is defeated you can discard the top card of your deck, and if it's not a unit, so an upgrade or an event, you can deal two, two damage to a brown unit. You also got some really good ambush ones that are unique as well, like Ephes Nest and Phoenix Jand, being very nice ones where not the best stats they cost, but then still good for what they are, because Ephes Nest is a 5 4, while Phoenix Jand is a 4 6. But they both have ambush, and with Ephes Nest, when a friendly unit is attacking using ambush, the defender gets minus 3 power, so kind of you can still have a little bit easier at Ephes. And Phoenix Shan is on attack, you can deal 1 damage to the defender for each uh, different cost among cards in your discard pile. So if you've got up to if you've got the costs of if you've got cards in your, uh, in your discard pile that like up to cost up to one to seven, that's seven damage you're chucking out when this attacks, meaning you can take something out before you even like attack with this. So you don't actually do damage, you just take it out by the effect. Very nice. And then you've got other front, like great upgrades and events in yellow as well, with like things like jetpack, which is a two cost um, upgrade. Like Hot Shot Blaster only gives it two power but no health, but and you can only attack it to attach it to a non vehicle but oh and you can <laughs> and you can smuggle in, but it's when it's got a when played doesn't need to be smuggled in. So it's when played as you give a shield token to that attached unit, but then at the start of the reroute phase you defeat that token. Now like you do lose like where you are, are you gonna use a shield token anyway, this is a great card to help to control board, because where you're gonna use lose the shield token no matter what, the you're not gonna keep the shield token until it's actually used. You're gonna lose it by the turn it ends. So you can put a jetpack on a unit and then straight away make sure you can attack it into a unit to take it out, because you're a little bit stronger two power, two extra power, and then you're gonna use it and then you're basically you're gonna use it as a shield. So if, rather than just go and play this on the swing of base. You can play this on the unit, attack to another unit to make use of that shield before it's defeated anyway. So you make full use of it, and then this has got two more power, and you've taken something off the board. And its smuggle cost is only like four, like four cost, uh, and that's cunning. So you can always smuggle it in as well. So you can always have it as a good ch charge target and play out later to kind of protect something and boost it up as well. Very good card, and that's the cunning options. So if you want to play a more like a uh, game like where you have almost option like a uh, answer to everything, cunning is a good way to go for it, and this also gives you access to. Um, Omega as well, thanks to Cunning on the base, so you can kind of play Omega out and kind of go for a more focused bad match deck you want to. Now, you might be thinking, what options does Hunter give himself? Because he gives you option of like Cunning and Heroic. Well, here we go, we're going to go over it, because while also you can have cards that are just um, Heroic, where the, the thing is with um, the sets is where set one, with the, like just the just Heroic cards almost fo like were mostly focused on Rebel, the Rebel trait. Now, where Hunter doesn't have the Rebel trait, 
he's not going to benefit much from the first set of um, heroic cards. And with the second set of like um, heroic stuff, it wasn't like a really theme, like focus on rev or anything like that. It was more like spread out. You had some, like some Wookiees and some other stuff. You got tech in there, which of course you get put in. But then you've got the um, which we'll show now. Like tech is a card uh, you put in. You got to put in it, it, no matter what for heroic. But outside of tech, there's not many. Just not like just heroic cards that are kind of worth going for. But tech is a really good one because not only does it fit with it and fit with the bad batch theme, but also gives you all your uh, resources smuggled. So tech is a good one to use, which I should have probably put up just showing just tech. But that's really the only just heroic card I reckon is great to use for um, Hunter. But now for the greens, the heroic side of green, you've got some very good ones. Like you've got some good um, unique units. So you've got Echo, uh, General Reich, and, and Marauder. These are very good ones. Like Echo is a good way to kind of um, boost up units on board, make use of these uh, uniques. Because with, with unique, while you control a card unique, you can't play never copy of it. And if you do, you defeat one of them. So if you had an Echo out and you want to play never Echo, you have to defeat one of the Echoes or the one you're playing or one you control already controlled. And if I mitigate that, Echo is a nice kind of way to make use of the unique units you can't really play. Because it's a 4 cost 4 4. River Sword 2, so when it attacks, it heals 2 from your base. But when played, you can discard a card from your hand and give 2 experience tokens to a unit in play with the same name as the card discarded. So if you've got 2 Echoes, easily you can use it straight away. You can play Echo, discard Echo, give Echo that you can just play, you've uh, played, and actually 2 experience, making him a 4 cost 6 6, then, which is very good. Or if you've got other unique units, discarding extra copies of them in hand, the boost that ever unique, unique cards up is a very nice swell. So it makes very good use of your heroics, a very good way to play with Hunter. You also got General Riken being a very good ground unit, being very good with stats was cost, uh, 6 cost 5, 7, and has an effect that both triggers when played or on attack, which allows you to choose a friendly unit and give it Sentinel, because it be himself or another unit, given Sentinel, uh, so that way, well, no, if it has Sentinel, you give an experience token, and otherwise it gains Sentinel for the phase. So if you come down to play it and you choose a card that doesn't have Sentinel, it gains Sentinel, meaning that your opponent has to go through it before it can go to your other units or your base on that side. And if it already if it does have Sentinel, it gains experience. So if you manage to ambush this in using either ECL, which is in form, is um in range for, or the um the event we've got that you probably see in a bit, that you can ambush it out, then you can get the effect of both both when it's played in attack, so you can swing uh, drop it and attack straight away to a unit. To give, uh, choose a card that doesn't have Sentinel, give Sentinel, and then choose it again. So now it has Sentinel, it gains an experience, which is pretty good. So this is a very good card, especially given something like Sentinel, so you're protected on that base, even like drawing attacks away from your rest stuff to a certain card. It's pretty nice. Then you got a good space event in like the Emerolder. So the Emerolder is a 5 cost, and it also has good stats at 4 or 5. Ambush as well, so it can come straight in and attack a friendly space unit. Well, no, enemy space unit, sorry, not a friendly one. And it also has a kind of good way to kind of make use of some of the, like, give you some ramp, but also make use of the uh, Hunter's skill and Echo skill as well. Because when played, you, you can choose a card in your discard pile, and if it, it and put into play as a resource if it shares a name with the with a card you control. So if you say, turn four, like, when you got four resources, play that Echo, discard an Echo to then boost Echo. The next turn you played Marauder, you can attack with it, and then when played, you, allow the, you can choose Echo in your discard. That you discarded from Echo's effect, you have Echo you control, and then you wrap the Echo in the discard into your resources. So a very good way to make thing, use of things like that, which is really cool. And then of course, then as a, as a, you control a unique unit in Echo, you have Echo in your discard, so you can go and grab out that Echo using Hunter's effect in the next turn, or if you've got resources for it as well. So a good way to play that. You also got actually some ramp in the heroic side before, like with the ramp for set one, there was only three ramps, being one in just green one in green black and then one in double green so green white was lacking in ramp but for set two it finally gets one and it's spark of hope now it's more of a situation one so what's cheaper than the rest the two cost it's more situation you've got something that's got to happen for it to trigger so it's an effect is to choose the unit in your discard pile if it was defeated this phase put into play as a resource now the problem with that is you need to have something defeated but luckily if you play out a cheap unit turn one you can at least force out the crash into another unit and kill itself like doing damage or taking out another unit and then that's now defeated so you can use spark of hope so not as easy to trigger like very you need to, like ever cards to kind of trigger and like the rest that just need themselves but for this one you need something else to trigger but it's easy enough to pull off and a little bit cheaper as well so you're not getting this off straight away but you can kind of easily set this up the trigger and then you got a ring reinforcement. That's a really nice one because it's a very good event, allowing you to play for seven, such so as top ten cards of your deck. For up to three units with a combined cost of seven or less, to play them out. So you can play the Marauder and Echo. Well, no, sorry, the Marauder and Omega from it. 
you can play things like echo and tech together you can play like any combination and get very good use to help you like spam out more more cards from the late game and get like however one big thing or a few little things as well and on the non heroic side of green you've got some very good cards you've got cob vamp which is a very nice one it also goes very good with uh, mega if even if you're not playing green because it's never a unique unit as well for hunters kind of effect and it's a free cost free two so they're kind of decent stats but when defeated, you can search the top 10 cards of your deck for a unit that costs 2 or less and discard it. And for this phase, you can play that unit from your discard pile for free. So you can like search for Omega, put Omega in the discard, and at any point in that phase, you can play out Omega for free from your discard. And then not worry about paying for free, so you don't have to worry about the aspect uh, aspect penalty on it because you pay it for free. You also got Agent Canis being never a unique unit that can has ambush for 5 cost 4 4. And if you never a unique unit is defeated, you draw cards. It's some good at synergy with Hunter, some pretty nice one there. And you've got good space units, so you've got Concerting Star Viper, which is a free cost, free free. But while you have the initiative, it gains restore two, so when it swings, you heal two. And Articun's Assault Cruiser, being an eight cost, seven, eight. With Ambush as well, it's always nice to see on some uh, cards. And it uh, allows you for when you attack a unit and defeat a non leader unit, you can put that defeated unit into play as your uh, resource under your control. So if you take out something on your opponents with it, you can then ramp that card you just defeated into your resources as more resources to do more things pretty nice card and also you have resupply being one of the other options you've got for ramping to kind of get our hunter quicker so that is it for the uh for this one so hopefully that's helped you understand how to build hunter if you're planning to do it i know i was technically hunting and i kind of still am want to try because i do like the bad batch and i do want to kind of tinker with it just i need to get hold of all like the uh cards because some of them are rares also it's just a release but I'm looking forward to trying it out so hopefully that's helped you out and that is all the green leaders for this one so we are going to be moving on now to the aggression cards so we're going to be moving on to the yeah the red leaders and the first one we've got for red leaders because we're keeping the um starter deck ones for the uh end of it so the last two of the series are going to be the starter deck ones being moth gideon and mandalorian for the next one we're going to red and we're going to next one we're going over is bosk so if you're interested in that stay tuned otherwise i'll catch you in the next one bye for now like